Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Youth Challenges. I'm your host, Fizal Mahmood. I'm with great honor. I'm here again today with Mulan Ahmed Karim Saib. Mulan Saab, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Mulan Saab, thank you for joining us today, taking some time out of your busy schedule. So Mulan Saab, this topic that we want to discuss today is a very interesting topic. Um, mm. A number of our viewers have actually requested that this topic be discussed on our show. And the topic we are referring to is arrogance. Mm. Arrogance and snobbery, whilst they might appear to be the same thing, slightly mm. different um, mm. in their essence, nevertheless, this is a topic which needs to be discussed because I fear that a lot of young Muslims especially don't realise that being arrogant is actually forbidden in Islam to the extent that it has been uh, remarked as haram by many scholars, mm. uh, which we will get into in due course. But what we, what do, firstly, to begin, Mawlana Sahib, uh, what do we mean by arrogance? Uh, yes, arrogance means a person thinks that I'm a superior to others. Mm -hmm. So this is a feeling. A person has it. And there are the different levels. One level is that a person, he feels that he is even superior to Mazallah, to Lord as well. Mm -hmm. So he, it is the utmost, you know, the level of arrogance. I'm greater than Lord like Firaun, like Namrud, they made this claim, we are Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one level of arrogance. The other one is that, like Qawmi Aad and Qawmi Samud, those nations, they said that, okay, there is a divine power, but these prophets are not, we are more better. Mm -hmm. So they don't, you know, the, they feel that they are better than these prophets. So this is second level of arrogance. Third level of arrogance is that a person thinks about the, your fellows. You are better than all these fellows. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the feeling in the, the, this feeling you can express in many ways. Some people, you know, the, they, they show their mood and uh, they cannot, you know, the listen any sort of, uh, if you make any, any comment, you can't, can't bear the why, because this feeling of arrogance. Yeah. Definitely. And so, in its essence, it is when someone believes that they are superior mm. to another. And I think this is a, a common uh, kind of trend that you can find um, in this day and age especially. A lot of people, they do kind of compare themselves to other people and think to themselves that I'm better than this person. And how we should be as Muslims has kind of got lost. And similarly, with, with snobbery, that's also the um, similar sort of thing. Is But that's more so that you're showing off you know, you're showing off your, your lifestyle, your characteristics to other people mm -hmm. just to sh belittle them and show them that you're mm -hmm. better than them. Yeah, so basically, you know, what happened? You have this feeling of arrogance. Mm -hmm. Now, how can I express my arrogance by showing off? Yeah. So I would like to, you know, uh, make my sort of authority to others. So I have a big car to impress other people. Mm -hmm. So there are the many other tactics. For example, when I'm talking to you, I'm talking, I'm saying that, oh, look at that. The best surgeon of the town he is my surgeon. I'm getting the best, you know, the, 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 the way we are doing, showing of why, to impress you. You become impressed, so you accept it, who oh, he is and something, Superman. So <laughs> that, that's, that's uh, yeah. Definitely, someone's up. Having said that, what, we, what I want to ask you now is, so what is the, the problems associated with arrogance? So why is being arrogant a problem, more so in Islam? The first and foremost problem of arrogant person is that the person does not accept truth. Mm. Because sometimes truth is bitter. For example, if you have any flaw, you know, every person has certain flaws, but the person is not willing to listen it and don't accept it. You say, oh, I'm a flawless person. So if I, so he will not accept truth. Mm. Like shaitan that showed that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you think about that. Shaitan who had witnessed the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as if a person stands in the court of a king and says that, O king, I will not follow your commands. So how bitter this feeling is. Definitely. So that, 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 that was the problem. 
when mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam, so he says, no, I will not. So he says that, Ana khalaqtani min narim wa khalaqtum min teen. I'm better than him because you created me from fire. So that is the sentence, I'm better than him. Mm. You created me from fire and created him from uh, clay. So that is why I'm better. So why I do this one? So th that is the, the, the basic thing. The person will not entertain truth. Though he, though he admits that, in the core of heart he realizes this is a truth, but out of arrogance. Like Abu Jahl, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says that, in my age, Firaun is Abu Jahl. Mm. Abu Jahl knows that very closely. He had seen the miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And his heart knows that he is a prophet of Allah, but out of arrogance. Why accept this truth? Mm. Even at the time of death, when the person who tried to kill him, he said that, take my neck a little bit down so people can see that the long neck, this is the one of our, you know, the, the chief of Makkans. So this is the evidence. Wow. Well, so that is very beautifully summed up. And, you know, I think the significant thing that we need to take from that, um, my Muslim brothers and sisters, is that arrogance was a characteristic trait of shaitan himself. Now this expresses the severity of the matter. And you know, so an arrogant individual essentially possesses, resembles Iblis. He resembles yes, shaitan. Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. It is against Iman. One side is faith, mm. one side is, you know, the against Iman. That is why there is a hadith, la yadkhul jannata man kana. Misqala fi zarratin kibr. Misqala fi qalbihi zarratin kibr. In the heart, even a tiny mustard seed size, a person has arrogance. He will not enter in paradise. On a contrary, there are another hadith. If a person has a tiny mustard size of iman in a heart, he will go to Jannah. Oh, wow. So look at that if you compare both of them. So it is contrary to Iman. That is why the person will not, why Namrud did not accept it? Why Firan did not accept it? Why Shaddad did not accept it? Why Abu Jal did not accept it? They had seen the miracles. Mm -hmm. Even the, uh, the Saleh Alayhi Salam's nation, they asked the Saleh Alayhi Salam, okay, there is a mountain. If your Lord, you know, the bring the camel from that, from that mountain, we believe on you. So the Saleh alayhi salam, he made dua and then she camel appeared from there, but they didn't believe it. Mm. Because of arrogance. So definitely, so I mean, Mulan Saab, I just want to focus a little bit on that hadith <coughs> that you just pointed out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam mentioned that anyone with, with an atom's worth of arrogance will not enter into Jannah. Now Mulan Saab, this is very, very significant because someone could be the most pious person you know, that you know, they could spend their entire life doing, doing charity for others, being an upstanding member of, you know, um, Islamic community and, and just, um, you know, praying their salah, doing good deeds. And just because that person is arrogant, he will not enter Jannah effectively. Uh, very sadly, very sadly, I must say this one. Unfortunately, you know what happened? I'm thinking that I'm the best one. Do though I'm doing it the service of deen or something like that. Mm. But out of arrogance, I'm saying that, okay, I will not read Salah behind this Imam. Oh, wow. This is our arrogance. We are not accepting. Religious scholars, we don't have this tolerance. Tolerance, where the tolerance comes from? If you are not arrogant person, then you tolerate others. Yes. Intolerate society, how it revolves, because you are arrogant. You don't listen any critics, you don't listen and you look at that, any fascist regime, any authoritative regime, any dictatorial regime, what is that? Who is the head? Arrogant, most arrogant person. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot speak, there is no liberty of speech, there is no liberty of anything. Why? The person can't listen anything against himself. No critics, no thing. That is the issue of if a Muslim scholar he cannot entertain any question. If you ask the question, and he makes a flare up on that. As Umar asked that question, when he stood up in public, 
And one Sahabi Rasul, he said that, oh, Umar, you gave a sermon later, first you tell that you had a two chadda, two garments. We got one. How got you two? You got two. First give me answer of this. Then you deliver your speech. Hazrat Umar did not flare up on that. Those Umar you know that he's had lots of grandchildren. Yeah. But he didn't flare up. And then he explained. He said, yes. One is mine, one is my son, Abdullah bin Umar's. Because I'm at all, that is why he gave it to me. So he explained. Uh, other side, you know what happened. You, you, may, you may ask any question to any person. So he flared up. Why you ask me this one? Yeah. And uh, intoler inter intolerance in such a level, you ask me anything and then I give a fatwa, you are a kafir, you are a nafiq, you are this one. And that is a height. And you are saying, right. Um, we are not to give any, any, any sort of decision, okay, who will get, go to hell. But uh, these, these are says that if a person having this the arrogant and this level of atom size, so we must we think about it. And I'm very sadly, I'm telling you, you know, all the, those people, those are in husband and wife. There is a routine uh, sentence, I'll see you. I'll see you who save you. I will see you. I will do this one. I will do everything I. Mm. This is arrogance. My brain child. Who give you this idea of my? Who can give in, this, in the whole family? I am. So we are the victim of this disease. Definitely, Moran Saab. And unfortunately, I, you know, I do hate to say it, but it's, it's becoming more so common uh, within, within our young Muslims of today because um, you will come across many young individuals who will belittle others uh, based on wherever they are currently at in life. So, for example, um, someone, you will find it's quite common that someone with more, for example, Instagram followers, mm. yeah, will think he is better than someone who has less followers than him. Mm. It, it's got to this stage that it, it, it's generally, it's become this petty amongst the youngsters that based on small things like this, they will begin to think, okay, I'm better than this person. You know, maybe they're wearing designer clothing, they think I'm better than this person, you see. And once again, some people that enter into um, uh, maybe higher paying professions or more, more professional jobs compared to labor jobs, and they start thinking, okay, I'm here now everyone else is here. Mm -hmm. Now once again, it all comes back to the same thing because this, it qualifies as arrogance. And as you mentioned, arrogance is not something which is permissible. So Melissa, what I want to ask you is, um, I came across a number of scholars who actually made this suggestion, um, but I'd like for you to clarify for us today, is that would you regard arrogance as being haram? Yes, it is totally haram. Mm -hmm. When we have uh, clear verses of uh, Quran, uh, Allah says that فَدْخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا فَبِئْسَ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ فَبِئْسَ مَسْفَ الْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ What a rest destination of mutakabbirin. For them the doors of hell would be open and they will enter in that. There are the clear verses of Quran. There are clear hadith regarding that. And uh, when we have these hadiths, when verses of Quran, that clearly shows that, and so there is no, you know, the second opinion. But you know what happened? Uh, it is not a physical phenomena. Mm. It is an emotional phenomena. So we should be very careful, because to brand other person you are arrogant, it shows that you himself are an arrogant person. Mm. If you are finding faults others, so there must be some correction needed in yourself. So it is sort of, you know, the spiritual phenomena. Yes, if a person loud and clear says that, yes, I am, he announced that, then we know that he is an arrogant person. Yeah. Or he, if he makes any action like that, like the dictatorial action or he's doing it, then we say that, okay. But if we don't have any solid, you know, proof, then we don't say, for example, if a person is a moody in a, in a family, who is arrogant, you know, we make up uh, in our uh, family, we are, if a person is a silent or shy, so oh, he is arrogant person. Yes. He is not talking to other people. So we should be very careful by branding other people is arrogant. Yeah, definitely, Mulan Saab. And I think, I think it's a good thing you mentioned that because I believe the term arrogant has become very commonly used and it's, it's beginning to lose its meaning that mm. you know, people accuse others of being arrogant. 
even if, for example, they're just shy, as you mentioned, mm. they're not speaking when they're in a group of people. Mm. But you, once again, you know, you're beginning to assume what someone is like. And, mm. and that in itself um, is not actually permissible because you should always think the best of other people mm. in Islam. Right. So, Mulan Saab, um, moving on, just I want, if you could clarify some of the different types of arrogance. Yes, actually, you know, as I uh, told you that the uh, levels, mm -hmm. the levels are, you know, a person thinks about, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And in you know, the types, you say that a person expresses arrogance with speech, a mm -hmm. person expresses arrogance by his gestures. Yeah. So, you know, Allah says that he was walking on the earth arrogantly. So they, they think that they can touch the height of the mountains. So they can they can tear apart the this earth. So these are verses of Quran. So Definitely. on the other side, Allah says that those are humble people. Why bother Rahmani Yamshuna Lord the Hauna? They are walking very humbly on the face of earth, meaning your physical gesture. Also, you know when uh, 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 the other person are shaking hands, uh, there there is a very very you know the interesting and very informative for us when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, you know had had shake with the other people so Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam moved his whole body towards that person mm. it is also a, a gesture of arrogance i am holding your hand and i am looking at there yeah so and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not leave the other person's hand till he left the hand of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh. so this is the physical gestures that is why Quran Allah says, وَقَدَا رَبُكَ اللَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدِينَ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ حَدُوْمَ أُكِلَهُمْ فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَ أُفِّمْ وَلَا تَنْهَرُمَ Ufim means don't make shrugging your shoulders, you, you, your physical gestures. The other thing is that you're, you're, uh, you're, you're speaking. And in speaking, you know what happened. You don't entertain any sort of critics. Oh, yeah. If anybody critical, so you become enemy on that person. But on the contrary, you appreciate praise. Everybody is praising you. You are the one of the best of the person, apple of uh, eyes of everybody. When you go to there, so everybody says, yes, he is Mr. Fon. So then you are oh. If those people are not giving you this protocol, you don't go there. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Fizan, we can judge ourselves. Am I have this sort of feeling? Mm. My friends, uh, critics, uh, give me some critics and I become angry. Or I correct myself, I reflect on that. For example, my friend says that you are a smoker. And instead of saying, okay, everybody is smoking, what happened? What is wrong with me? Yeah. So I become angry or I think, yes, thank you for you. You will correct me. The other side is that, if a person are praising and I say, all right, you know what happened here and everywhere, any boss, they have some people, those who are always, you know, give a butter service, you are the best boss. Yeah. So <laughs> boss always give them raise because of this feeling of arrogance. Yeah. Definitely. So Mulan Saab, um, we also we discussed arrogance in its essence. We've also discussed some of the traits that an arrogant person has and some of the the issues with being arrogant. Well, so what I want to ask you now is with regards to um, remedies. So how can an individual who, who does have this arrogant trait in them kind of rectify themselves? How can they change their behavior? You know, is there, what would you recommend? Mm. Sahaba Ikram asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell, tell us regarding the dwellers of Jannah and dwellers of Jahannam. Who would be? Mm. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the arrogant and tyrant people would be the dweller of Jahannam, hell, and submissive and humble and weak people would be the dwellers of paradise. First of all, a person must keep in the mind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's player, if I would like to earn the player of Allah, so then what happened? I become humble. Yes. If I don't become humble, I will not earn the player of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you keep in your mind, my, I cannot 
get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then automatically you will start acting upon it. So then what you gonna do when you start acting upon it? So Thank you, Mulan Sab. Um sorry Mulan Sab, we're just gonna take a short break here yeah. and we'll resume after the break. So dear viewers, please stay tuned in and we'll meet you after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.